Hi everybody, it's Chris from ChristopherJ.net and I'm here just to share what I've learned about changing the strings on the double bass. I'm a do-it-yourself kind of guy and this doesn't intimidate me. Um, if you're not uh, comfortable with it, I recommend that you uh, take your bass to a uh, uh, repair shop, uh, a luthier who can uh, change the strings for you. First of all, I recommend that you put the bass in a horizontal position. Uh, that's what I've learned. I learned that inside the, uh, the double bass, um, which is constructed a little bit differently than a guitar, there is a uh, wooden post called the sound post that's directly under the foot of the, uh, the bridge under the G string. And it's um, about an inch in diameter and it's like a round wooden dowel and it runs vertically and it's sandwiched between the top and the back of the bass. So if you have the bass in uh, an upright position or on its side and you loosen the tension on the, the bridge that takes the tension um, off of the sound post and it's liable to fall over and that is pretty difficult to get back and then you probably do need to take it into a luthier to get it fixed. So we don't want that to happen. So. Put it on a horizontal surface. I have it on a coffee table. You can put it on a bed or some kind of a workbench as long as you have it uh, uh, on a soft surface so it won't get scratched. Um, I have some towels on mine. And um, with it on a surface like this, you can see that the scroll is not uh, supporting the weight of the rest of the base. And that would be bad because then that would put an extra pressure on the heel. Um, of the neck where it attaches to the body of the bass and that joint is already under a lot of tension from the pressure of the strings so we don't want to add to that. Then the next thing is it's best if you loosen the strings, change the strings one at a time. The reason being you keep the tension on the bridge and it stays in its position pretty much. Um, you can mark it lightly with something like a, a pencil. Don't scratch your base, but just a very light mark um, that'll come off so you know where the bridge was um, when you began. And that's about how you go about it. Okay, now we're looking down into the uh, peg box on my base, and you have the E string, the A string, the D string, and the G string. I don't know that it matters a whole lot which string you start with. I'm going to start with the G string. And if you don't have one of these devices, I recommend that you find one. It's a bass string winder, unwinder, and it's essentially a little crank that fits over the uh, end of your tuning machine. And this one's made by TurboTune. I forget where I got it, either my music store or online. Oh, it's made by Dunlop. See that? And it's called the Turbo Tune. So you place it under the tuning machine and you just crank and loosen. Now as you're unwinding the G string, you may notice that because the D string is in the way of the windings for the G string, you can't completely access um, the loose string to pull it out of the hole. In that case, you need to loosen the D string also a little bit so you can move this over um, out of the way. So now I've loosened the D string and I've moved it out of its slot on the nut, and as you can see, now I have easy access to uh, the loose G-string and I can pull it all the way out. And you would do essentially the same thing with all the remaining strings, one at a time of course. Okay, once you've loosened the string, as you can see the G-string is now loose. It's best to Pull it through the slot in your tailpiece if you can. I don't know if this one will come through because it has the uh, it has a pretty big ball end and the uh, foam uh, 
washer is on there. So what you need to do is be very careful that you don't scratch your base when you pull the uh, string through. So you can put a cloth under the tailpiece just to protect the surface. And then hold the loose end of the string up and then pull it all the way through. Okay, so that one's out. Before you put in a new string, get rid of that, um, it's best, this is a good opportunity to wipe down your fingerboard. And if you have a, something to clean it with, such as lemon oil or um, another recommended cleaner for string instruments, this would be a good time to clean it. I recently purchased a uh, cleaning and polishing kit from Colstein's. I'm sure they'll appreciate this. Colstein's instrument all cleaning and polishing kit. And this stuff is super concentrated. I used it uh, a couple months ago to completely clean the surface of the base and uh, a tiny bit goes a long way. And You probably want to do this in a well ventilated area because it's got uh, some kick to it. So it comes with a, uh, a cleaner that says caution combustible, so don't smoke around it or blow off any fireworks nearby, or you might regret it. And so this is really good for cleaning off grime and build-up rosin and things like that. And then the polish, really, it's the bomb. It just makes the thing look like new. So you can clean your fingerboard and then install the new string. Um, the strings I have on here are uh, by Tomastic Enfeld, and they were the Belcanto Bel uh, strings, which I really like a lot, uh, but I wasn't completely happy with the pizzicato sound on the lower strings, especially the E string. Um, I've been playing mostly Arco, but uh, some of the passages where there's been pizzicato, it hasn't quite had the sound I was looking for. So, um, a string that um, I've heard some good things about on some of the bass forums was by Diderio Zyak strings, so that's what I'm going to try. So the first string that we'll start with is the G string, and you install it kind of the reverse of the way you removed the old one. You need to thread it carefully through the tailpiece and try not to scratch the base while you're doing that. Make sure you put on the, uh, the little felt uh, piece, I don't know what they call it, a washer or a bumper. It just protects the wood on the uh, tailpiece from the, the metal ball end wearing it out. So you put that through there and then it would be a good idea to lubricate the slot of the uh, the bridge where the string runs with a little graphite or a, a soft pencil. So you just put some pencil in there and it will help it glide over that better and improve your tunability. Same thing on the nut end. I don't know if you can see this in the video, but just put a little bit in the nut like that. Then we'll move to a close-up shot of putting the string back on. Okay, here we are with a close-up shot of the peg box, and I'm going to thread the G-string through the tuning machine. So first you find the, the hole in the post, of course, and just put the, uh, the end of the string directly through that, and pull it through. Then I pull through uh, a few inches and then wrap it um, back around the string a few times. This will prevent slippage. Then once you've done that, you start to tighten
and by the way you want the string to wrap from the center outwards towards the side of the peg box and it's best to have it if you can um, so that the wraps lie next to each other and don't overlap that may not always be possible though Okay, now I've got the G-string, the new G-string installed and completely wound to uh, approximately pitch tension. And you can see the string lies flat on the tuning post, which is how you want it. I would be very careful. I'd advise against using uh, wire cutters inside the peg box. Um, I've never done it on a bass, but on guitars I have found a few times where I've accidentally clipped a good string rather than the, uh, the end of the string that I didn't want. So once you've installed the first string, do the same procedure on the remaining strings. <laughs> 